Hello! Welcome to another episode of the Weekly Wind Down. Cheers! Cheers! Red glass. Red glass, red wine, red yes. shoes. <laughs> so, today we are drinking, um, I've been on a kick with Cabernet Sauvignons. Uh, so today we are drinking a Napa Valley. It's called Ore Cart, and it's a 2017 Cabernet Sauvignon. So today, we are going to be talking to you about why HRV matters. And we're going to get a little sciencey, but it's I want it to be applicable to you guys. And so often we think about stress and we see this being bad. We see this being negative. We want to avoid stress. Where in actuality, stress this. <laughs> stress helps us build capacity. And, and what I mean by capacity is think about the last time that you um, went running. If you run often, running five miles is not a big deal. But if you don't run often, you don't have the capacity to go and run five miles and it be not a big deal. And so maybe one mile becomes a big deal. It's the same thing with our body and stress. And stress comes in four different ways, spiritual, mental, emotional, and physical. And our body doesn't know the difference between them. And thus, there's one metric that shows us how our body's handling stress the resiliency and the capacity in which we've built up, and that is HRV. And so that truly gives us the reason and the understanding as to where we are in our stress level and where we can create that change and where we can build that capacity. So Justin has a very scientific understanding of it. So anytime I think about HRV and I try to understand HRV, it's the higher your HRV, the better. The higher, the the higher your HRV, the better. And so when you're using some sort of a wearable to track your HRV, what I like to do is it's the first thing I look at when I wake up. Because typically if you're using a wearable, it's it's tracking your HRV when you're asleep. And so you can do that with a Whoop Band, an Apple Watch, a BioStrap, a Fitbit, a Polar, a Garmin. Garmin, yeah. You name it. So I like to look at that HRV when I wake up to measure how recovered I am. Um, And that is kind of in layman's terms and a less science way of of explaining it, how recovered I am. So if I have a higher HRV, I then like to gauge myself, how am I feeling, right? Am I feeling well rested? Am I feeling like I got a good recovery? Am I feeling like I can hit a really strong workout that day? Or maybe I had a lower HRV. Am I feeling lethargic? Did I not really get enough sleep? Um, Did I not drink enough water yesterday, right? Was I super stressed out? Did I have a crazy back-to-back day where it was meeting after meeting after meeting? So what I like to do in the morning after I look at my HRV, I like to do a quick checklist, a quick reflection. What did my my previous day look like? What were the habits that I had? What can I do better or differently today to make sure that I'm not having – dipping into a lower HRV again that next day, because if I do, then that that anxiety and that frustration and that exhaustion is just going to build up. And what's unique about what Elise is saying is that's kind of on the micro level, the day to day. But what we also want to pay attention to is the trend of that HRV. Because we go back to what I said at the beginning, what is it looking at is how do we build capacity, resiliency from a standpoint of HRV and stress capacity. So as we add those things into our life, are we overstressing ourselves day to day and our HRV is staying low or are we stressing ourselves, and then we see that low HRV and we're retracting a little bit, we're maybe taking it easier on the workout, we're maybe doing a little shorter workout, we're doing some interval stuff, we're doing some yoga, um, we are, we're, we don't, we don't, we're not traveling every weekend, uh, maybe we're staying in tonight, we're not going to bed as late, whatever it may be to take some stress away from the body. And then is the HRV going up over the course of a month, two months, three months, six months? And are we seeing that upward trend? Because if we take a time and we start segmenting it, it's when that trend line starts to go down that we're overstraining ourselves. We're pushing too far, too hard, too long. That's when we open ourselves up to sickness, performance decrements, and uh, and open ourselves up to disease. So what's the key takeaway here? It would be to find some sort of wearable that you can start to track HRV. Justin listed a whole slew of them that 
that are great to use, but find something. And then start to add in that reflection piece every morning. How are you feeling? How does it compare to my HRV? And then finally, as Justin said, look at the look at the trend over time to see what it really means for you. And with that, you can perform better. And that is why HRV matters. <laughs> Go on it. Cheers. <laughs>